Well, the time is almost upon us. The grandest game in European club football, the UEFA Champions League final, Borussia Dortmund versus Real Madrid. Dortmund will be competing in their 300th European game and their third ever Champions League final, while Real Madrid are seeking a staggering 15th hold on the iconic trophy, looking to extend their lead as the most successful team in the history of the competition. Joining us to preview this mammoth encounter is our global football correspondent, Juan G. Arango, and Sportsmax analyst, Leger Williams, trying to concretize his label as the prediction guru. Gentlemen, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Shall I go to Juan G. Arango first? Juan, we've already labeled Real Madrid huge favorites here for the match, but we know that the game has to be played before the Champions League trophy is, is, is delivered. Um, how, how likely do you think the odds could be for an upset result here? I mean, they're, they're likely. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, well, you know, it's just, you know, the match is going to be just an afterthought of formality. No, it's not. I mean, you can have on a one-off type of final, anything can happen. That, that's one thing we have to keep in mind going into, into an affair of this nature. Second of all, it's at a neutral site. Third of all, it's, it's a team that's coming and finding itself into good form against another team that is known basically how to play these types of matches. So it'll be compelling from that perspective, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, and Lish, uh, Borussia Dortmund got by some pretty solid teams to get where they are, Atletico Madrid and um, PSG in the knockout phase of the UEFA Champions League. Is there anything that you saw in their game strategy and how they played that would suggest to you that they have the tools to create an upset result here? Yeah, I saw a couple of things actually, both in their defence and in their attack. So if I touch on their defence first, because I think that's what they'll be doing for majority <laughs> of this game. I think they have a pretty good structure. They press in a multitude of ways. Sometimes in a 4-2-3-1, sometimes in a 4-4-2, sometimes in a 4-1-4-1, sometimes in a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond. So they're pretty flexible in their pressing structure and they'll have to be in their defensive shape because Madrid aren't a very orthodox team. Real Madrid like to attack in, 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 a, in a pretty unorthodox way and they like to just really allow their players to shine. They have, Real Madrid probably have the best accumulation of talent in world football. And what Carlo Ancelotti does at a pretty high level is put them in positions where they can express themselves and play well. They don't have a set structure in possession like a Manchester City would, a Arsenal would, a Barcelona would. It's more so just allowing their players to not necessarily freestyle it, but knowing when to occupy certain spaces. So they are a very difficult team to man mark, for example. So I think your mid block and your defensive block have to be really, really strong. And Borussia Dortmund have shown across the Champions League this season that it is very strong. And then in attack, they transition really quickly. So they have the players to transition quickly. When you speak about Adeyemi, Fulkrug, who's good at for a big striker to get in behind. And they have the pace on the wings, pace coming off of the bench as well. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how they match up with Real Madrid. But I do think that they have the tools both in defence and offence to cause Real Madrid some problems. Yeah, and Juan, a quick comment here from you on the fact that Real Madrid, from time to time during the season, have looked vulnerable. There is no question that we have mm -hmm. seen them play games that they have looked a little bit vulnerable. But to their credit, they trust the process. They have the experience, they have the know-how, they keep their shape, and it's almost as if they are confident that they will get a result, favorable result, even if they are trailing in a game. And that, to me, speaks to their confidence, the culture of success that the, the, the club has, not just the players now, it, it's almost as if the club culture transitions into the current players, that this European football is, 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 is their playground. Is their, yeah, is their playground, is their bread and butter. It, it's where they end up really shining, to be quite honest with you. Um, yeah, it, it's all of that, but it's also the intangibles. It's a team that understands that in order to get to a certain phase of this, this tournament, you have to be willing and capable of enduring certain levels of suffering, which they have done throughout several phases of this tournament, especially we talk about how they played against City, how they played against Bayern. Th those are those are examples that really show what they've been able to do not even just this year and years past when they won it what they've been able to endure and whether it's hunkering down defensively or being able to have one or two shots that they completely dominate and take advantage of case in point look at the final against liverpool look at the match against manchester city that they were able to only have one opportunity and that's all they needed in order to uh, to be able to to beat or to, to get over a, a manchester city side that 
pretty much had him be, uh, at a defensive stance. So so it's it's all that it, it, with Real Madrid you have to look at a lot of intangibles and, and how they end up comporting themselves based on those intangibles. And, and of course, the most important one, the one that I omitted for last, is that their ability to know that until the last whistle, if they're down one nil, especially in this final, they know they're still in it. Yeah, a quick comment from you, Lejean, on that narrative, which we've just presented, that Real Madrid have been in sticky positions before, but somehow they just almost know that they will come back and get the result. Yeah, it's in the nature of the club. They're a, a team who knows how to win. And knowing how to win, I don't want to say it's a skill, but it provides a mindset that they're never out of things. And season after season, year after year, we've seen them come back at the death. I don't think they've ever had a, a, a pretty calm Champions League campaign where they've just been dominant throughout. They always have to come back through some adversity. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that we see again tomorrow. Yeah, and speaking about surprises, this is no surprise. We were told once he is fit, he will start earlier today. One news um, being confirmed by, of course, Carlo Ancelotti that Thibaut Courtois is fit and will be starting for Real Madrid. Yeah, I mean, it was the only doubt that I had going into this match was how fit is he for a match of this ilk? And it, it, it's not me criticizing Thibaut Coutouin, what he's done or hasn't done. I mean, his resume speaks volumes alone, so I, I'm not criticizing that. It's saying, okay, is he ready for a match at this level, at this moment, knowing what he's endured? And, and of course, I don't know that clearly. The only one that does is Carlo Ancelotti, and he gave the green light to do so. Because if he weren't ready, I would be assured 100% that Lunin would be in goal for this match. And, and trust me, what he's been able to do with this campaign, there's no doubt that he's also willing and has made every single argument to be a starter if that were the case. Yeah, and Leisha, quick comment on, of course, that decision to start Thibaut Courtois. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about it, but as one mentioned, we aren't going to know everything about the ins and outs of Real Madrid, how yeah. Courtois has been rehabbing, preparing. Lunin has been pretty impressive, but I think it's going to be interesting to see how Dortmund react to Courtois playing, if they're going to try and get off a couple of early attempts to uh, early crosses as well to try and unsettle him because he hasn't played football in such a long time. But one thing I do know is that Carlo Ancelotti is probably one of the best, if not the best coach ever at man management and preparing his players for certain moments. And I think that just him putting Courtois into that lineup just shows the immense faith he has in him. And I think Courtois is going to give him yet another good performance. Yeah, and earlier today, Juan, I focused a bit on Dortmund, of course, because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody is talking about all the advantages of Real Madrid. And I was looking very closely at their keeper, Gregor Cobell, and the stats show that he has kept six clean sheets for this season. And I think he's somebody that a lot of us has been sleeping on. Yes. I, I mean, to go and say how defensively uh, endowed uh, uh, Borussia Dortmund end up being just on the goalkeeper alone ends up being an injustice to yeah. the entire defensive structure that they've been able to establish in front of him. Now, has he been able to bail them out in certain situations? Absolutely. I mean, that, that match against the, the return leg against PSG, where he had about, if I recall, three or four big saves, it helps a lot. It, it proves one thing for sure, that he is one of those big club goalkeepers that when called upon, he's able to step up and he's able to step up in a big way. But also give a lot of credit in that match against PSG and of course throughout the 180 minutes, and I'm just using that as a small reference, the amount of times that, sh that PSG players shot on target and there was a player in front of the ball blocking it, jumping in front of it, being able to block angles, being able to cut off alleys, and that type of thing. And, and one thing that was not really mentioned post-game was every time Kylian Mbappe was playing out wide, he had no one to play off of. And that's a great job that, that Edin Terzic was able to do in order to help the defense shift, in order to have players accountable for Mbappe, whether it was in space or with the ball at his feet and being able to, to pretty much shut down one of the biggest contributors or one of the biggest producers of offense for PSG. So again, it's a collective effort when you start talking about the goalkeeper until the goalkeeper has to make the shots that, that ended up being going off the crossbar or what it may be. But overall, yeah, you have to give him credit, but you also have to give credit to the players in front of him that made his job just a little tad bit easier. Yeah, and one of those players, Lidge, has to be spoken about, Matt Hummels. He has been in the headlines recently, not for the best of things. Um, the time, and I will say, is off, of course, criticizing 
being um, added to such as um, submissive tactics is what he has said. So many are saying, you know, he's saying these things just a couple of days before the Champions League final. Uh, your thoughts on that? But of course, we cannot disregard the contribution he has made for Borussia Dortmund. This will be the second time he's in the final for them. 2013, he was a part of the team. But the comments he made. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting, but it's a common school of thought that none of the best players in the world want to play a submissive style of football. None of them want to play behind the ball. They want to be front foot and going forward. I think maybe as an experienced player, maybe he shouldn't have said that <laughs> out in the media and probably would have tried another way to get that point across. But I think he was really just trying to show that he wants to go into that Champions League final and really bring the game to Real Madrid because he believes he can. And you mentioned 2013, he was a part of a Borussia Dortmund squad that put four past Real Madrid in the semi-final right. to even get to that final. So he, he's a player with massive experience, a World Cup winner, a player of brilliant quality really, has been a very consistent centre-back. So he's going to be a big player for Dortmund, not only with his defending, also how he passes out from the back. So he's going to be a key cog. It's going to be interesting to see how Real Madrid try and stop him from source. Yeah, you know, earlier this week when we were talking to Simon, I had presented the picture that we've seen two pretty major upsets in cup finals in the past week and a half. Man United over Man City and uh, Atalanta shocking Barry Leverkusen, their first loss of the entire season, Leverkusen. So um, they say things happen in threes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that I think Real Madrid will lose this match, but we've already put the story on the table that um, it's a game that 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 is not a foregone conclusion because Borussia Dortmund has shown that they have the tools to topple a team that is regarded as better than than they are. But if you were uh, Borussia Dortmund's coach minutes before game time, what would be the most important thing, Blige, that you would be telling this team? Be brave. Always, uh, that, that's something that you have to instill into players, especially when you're going against, as you said, a team that many feel are, a bit, are better than you, but you have to tell them to be brave and remind them that you're in this occasion for a reason. You're in this showpiece game for a reason. It's because you have the quality to be here, but you have to go out there and show your quality because the Real Madrid are a team where the moment they, they're like sharks, the moment they see a little piece of blood, they're, gone. they're just gone <laughs> with you. So you have to go out there, show your intent immediately, win your duels, be brave and just show Real Madrid that you're a team of quality. And I'm not saying that's going to be enough to do it, yes. but if you couple that with the game plan that I'm sure Terzic will have, I think that Dortmund will have a much better chance than most think. Yeah, and um, Juan, no chance of Real Madrid coming in here with any level of complacency and the feeling that, you know, they have this 1-1? One -one. I, I don't think so. Why? At least one would not hope so. Because, again, and to, pony, and to pretty much piggyback on what Leger said to kind of illustrate my point, is to learn from the mistakes of others. And that uh, learn from the mistakes that Bayern made when they were making the substitutions and things were breaking down slowly but surely, but there really wasn't a true plan to establish, okay, some type of neutralization of the op opponent. And Dortmund need to learn that. If they're up 1-0, the best way to get rid of Real Madrid is to make it 2-0. If you're ahead 2-0, make it 3-0. You have to try and slay the beast in order to be able to get through against a team like Real Madrid because Leger said it just as well. You give them an inch, they're going to take a meter from you. They're going to do that. They're going to take advantage as much as they can. So you might as well try and finish off the match, kill off the match, whether it's scoring a second goal or completely neutralizing the opponent and basically submitting them to your will and from a defensive standpoint. That second one is a much taller task. But ladies and gentlemen, it has to be done if Borussia Dortmund look to stand a chance. Right, and the man on the screen, we just saw him, Carlo Ancelotti, in the press conference earlier today, actually said that one year Rango. He said, mm -hmm. you know, a Champions League final is the most important game and the most dangerous one. You have to be a bit lucky, you have to play well, never lower your guard. But when you reach a final success, it's so close and you start worrying. So from those comments, we get the sense that the man who has done this so many times before is saying that he will not be taking anything for granted. And I think that's so important. It comes with a lot of experience. Yes, yes it does. Yeah, so a quick prediction before we go, because we've got to wrap the segment now, uh, Juan. Let get, let's get your prediction first, then the prediction guru has, has his say. Scoreless at halftime, Madrid win 2-0. 
Wow. Oh, wow. Lish? No goals? No. I, I, I realize that one is trying to, to outdo me. He's trying to give some specifics. Six, yes. But, which, which we didn't ask for, but he's offering. Yeah, but you know, Sir Lance, I, I'm, I'm like a, a, a prize fighter. Yes. I, I don't just, just go. Just give me a prediction, hold man. Up, hold on. <laughs> About prize fighter. I'm like a prize fighter. I don't just go out and fight anytime. <laughs> I have to fight when the price is right. And what the price is telling me right now is that we have a Champions League final preview show tomorrow on Sports Max at 12.30 Jamaica time. Yes. 1.30 in the rest of the Caribbean. And if you want the prediction, Guru's prediction, yes. you're going to have to watch that to find out. No. Late. Oh, the sky is blue, right? That's my prediction, by the way, for tomorrow. <laughs> Lish, who's winning? I, I, I'm, I told you what's up. You, you will be on the show as well. You well, know, then I guess, Lance, we just leave him on that Champions League show because what's the sense? Yeah, well, it, it, it's okay. By, we... by the way, my, my prediction for tomorrow, it's going to be warm. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, of course, Juan. We always enjoy when we have you here on the Sports Thanks. Max Zone. And Lish, you're on detention. <laughs> Break time. <laughs>